Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Uh, it's going to kind of sound like I'm talking in a cave tonight because I've got everything off the walls and I've got this new wall built and I've got everything kind of set up makeshift here. So kind of bear with me tonight. Uh, but I want to talk about something this evening that happened today. Actually, it happened yesterday by the time you see this. It is uh, the shooting in Boulder, Colorado. Now, I wasn't going to do a video today. Uh, I wasn't going to do videos this week, but things keep coming up that I feel I need to talk about because, like I say, I am in the middle of a huge mess right now. I don't have a shooting set up and blah, blah, blah. It's just a lot of stuff, and I don't have enough time in the day to do a regular three-topic video every day. It takes too much time, so I'm going to try to do these little shorter videos or at least one-topic videos so I don't got to do as much editing or as many graphics or anything like that. But I'm babbling on about my circumstance here instead of talking about the topic. <clears throat> the topic I want to talk about, like I said, is the Boulder, Colorado shooting. And it is a tragedy, of course. Anytime any people lose their lives through no fault of their own, it's a tragedy. And uh, right now, we don't know enough about this to speculate even about why he did it. Now, by the time this video goes live, maybe we'll know why he did it. Maybe we'll know what his motive was. But as of right now, we don't know if he has a connection to someone in the store, if he's an ex-employee, if he, you know, uh, someone asked him to wear a mask and he didn't want to, you know, it could be anything. Uh, it could just be a random act of violence. We don't know right now. We don't know his motivation. The guy they pulled out didn't look like he's that uh, uh, together. But we will see. But what I want to talk about is uh, not the loss of life and not the fact that, you know, why do you do it? What, you know, whatever. Because we don't know that right now. And the, the loss of life is always a tragedy. But what I want to talk about right now that I think is uh, probably the second largest tragedy here is it's the way the media treats these things and the things they say and how they're trying to get people to live in fear. I think everyone knows that I don't like fear mongering. Don't like it at all. It makes people easy to control. It makes them easy to manipulate. If you can keep them scared and angry both at the same time, they'll make bad decisions. You'll get things like Patriot Acts from stuff like that. So that's why people do that. That's why people in power and that's why people who want to make money try to manipulate people through fear and anger because it works. And I want to talk about how the media is dealing with this right now. Because I was watching some of the coverage today. Okay, i got to move some shit here that's in my way. Uh, I was uh, watching the coverage today. And one of the people that came on the show said, it's a shame that in America today, people have to live in fear every time they go to the grocery store. Every time we go out in public, we live in fear. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't do that. Do you? Uh, why are they trying to tell everyone that you should live in fear everywhere you go? Events like this are so rare that if you live in fear of it happening, there's something wrong with you. You, might, you need counseling. There's far more chance you're going to get killed in a car wreck. I don't live in fear every time I get in my car that I'm going to die in a car wreck. Heck, I'm a veteran. <laughs> Statistically, I'm more likely to commit suicide than I am to have something like this happen to me. You know, there's all kinds of things that happen every day that cause a much greater loss of life. Hell, people shoving cake in their face causes more people to die every day than this. And the way the, manip the, the media manipulates people, like I said, through fear, by showing them these shocking images. I love when they come on and go, these images are going to be shocking. We just want to warn you. No, you just want to scare them and you want to entice them into seeing them because you want them to live in fear. Because that's how people in power stay in power. That's how people who are profiting off other people's fear and misery, that's how they continue to profit. And they pretend like it's they care about life. You know, they care about the loss of life. Oh, the loss of life. Don Lemon on there basically crying. And he is, couldn't even get simple facts right about the story. He's just the worst. Uh, but pretending to care. I'm so tired of seeing uh, news people pretend to care about life. They don't. Like I said... Far more veterans committed suicide today, on average. Far more. Many times more. You don't hear them, boo-hoo, those veterans. No. More people died in car accidents. More people died to drunk drivers. More, pe more kids died to child abuse. Neglect. More people died of hunger. Even in this country, 
than died in that uh, supermarket. But they don't care about those things because they don't care about life because what they're talking about, uh, the point they're trying to get across is not that they care, it's that you should be afraid. So they like to manipulate these things and exploit these things because they don't care about life. If they cared about life, they'd care about what happens to a bunch of teenagers in Chicago every weekend. They don't. They don't have breaking news every time a veteran commits suicide or a child dies from abuse or anything like that because it isn't sensational enough and it doesn't make people scared. Because if 100 people die in 50 locations, that doesn't scare people as much as if eight people die in one location. It's all about numbers and it all happening in one spot and preferably by a gun because that helps them scare people into doing stupid things like surrender their rights. And it's just disgusting to watch them try and pretend to care. I think people should be flooding their emails and their news boxes, their, their mailboxes, their email boxes, etc., with letters saying, well, this many people died of this today. Why don't you seem to care? Why don't you seem to care? Why do you only care when someone gets killed by a gun? And that's even smart, uh, far small numbers than these other things. And you don't seem to care about them. It's because they're pushing an agenda. And this whole thing about, ooh, being in fear every time you go to the grocery store, that's part of it. And I, like I said, that's the thing that set me off because I'm like, I actually turned uh, to my son and I said, do, are you, do you live in fear when you go to the grocery store? And he's like, no. And I was like, right, because any sane person doesn't. I just That's like saying you live in fear every time you cook dinner that your house is going to burn down. No, you don't because you're rational. They want you to be irrational. And there's another aspect to that. And this is the part that bothers me a lot is why is no one prepared to defend themselves? This is the perfect reason why you carry every day. That's my main point I want to make tonight. This is situations like this are the perfect reason why you carry every day. And not so you can be a hero and take out the bad guy. Uh, I mean, that would be great if he went in there and started shooting and he was shot at from six different directions where it wasn't just a one person with a rifle against one person with a handgun kind of situation. If he suddenly came under fire from two or three different directions, great. But in those situations, you know, it's often hard to tell, you know, what's going on right at first. So that's not very likely to happen unless there's a lot of people who have a clear view of what's going on. Uh, but the part I'm talking about, because like I say, I don't like to get into those tactical scenarios of I'm going to be the hero and I'm a sheepdog stuff. I like to deal with being personally prepared. And this is a perfect example. I should be personally prepared because you always hear stories in these situations. We heard it today with this. We heard it during the Pulse nightclub. We heard it during the school shootings of people cowering in fear, running and hiding, hiding behind coats and on a rack and things like that. Living in fear that he's going to come to you. The people in those bathrooms in the Pulse nightclub who were living in most, uh, uh, mortal terror in their last few moments because they knew we've got no way out. He's coming down the hallway shooting people because they have no way to defend themselves. Don't ever let yourself be in that situation. That's the main point of my video tonight. It's one, it's about how disgusting the media is and how they don't care and how they don't care about other things that are far more important. That's something we already know. I'm just kind of reiterating that. And it's another thing we already know is always be prepared. Like I say, not so you can be the hero. So many people want to twist it into saying, ah, see, these people want to carry and then they don't become the hero later. Well, it's not my job to be the hero. If someone becomes the hero, great. It happens, and I think most of us that carry every day would try to help, especially once we were certain what was going on. We would hunker down, get cover, and try to take out the bad guy. But even if you don't do that, if you don't know what's going on, let's say you're somewhere and you're trapped, you know if he comes through that door, I'll get the drop on him. You don't have to live in mortal terror the last few minutes of your life. That's why you want to carry. Can you imagine if something like this happened in a place like this, like a mall, etc., and you had no way out? You got trapped somewhere. You were cornered someplace. And he was approaching, the person or, or she, I don't want to be sexist in this, uh, was approaching and you could do nothing to protect your children except cover their eyes. Would you ever want to be in that situation? No, you wouldn't. You'd want to know, get behind me, let's get cover. If he comes around the corner, don't worry, daddy will take care of him or mommy will take care of him. 
we're prepared. That's not being a hero. That's being self-reliant. That's being self-sufficient. That's taking care of yourself and your own family, being prepared for bad situations. And when you're prepared, you don't have to live in fear of anything because you're prepared. That's like if you have a car that has a warranty, you're not as afraid of it breaking down because you're prepared if it breaks down. If you have a spare tire, you're not as afraid of getting a flat because you're prepared. If you have a kitchen fire, you're not as afraid if you have a fire extinguisher because you're prepared. You know, it's all these things. So carry every day. Be prepared. Don't find yourself in one of these situations where you are helpless. That's the worst feeling in the world, knowing something you could have done something if you'd been prepared. That's one of the reasons I think a lot of the uh, people that this kind of thing happens to and they survive get so upset because they felt so helpless. And they are mad at themselves, not only the shooter or the killer or whatever, they're also mad at themselves for allowing themselves to be put in that situation. Especially if someone in their family gets harmed. Like imagine if you were home even and someone broke in, held you and your family hostage, killed your spouse or one of your children, and you had nothing you could do about it. Don't put yourself in those situations. Be prepared. Take precautions. But be prepared if something happens. The best thing you can do is take precautions to try to not let things like that happen. Try to make sure if you're out in public that you know how to get out if you need to. Or that you keep your head on a swivel and pay attention to what's going on around you because you're in public. Doesn't mean be afraid. It just means be aware. And, like I said, in your home, have lights, have security, have alarms, have dogs, have whatever. Preparation. Prevention. Prevention is worth an ounce of cure, as they say. You know, a stitch in time saves nine, the old saying. But if things do go wrong, especially when you're out in public where you have less control over preparations outside of your own person, be prepared to deal with bad situations. Carry. Be ready. And like I said, I don't expect you to be a hero. I don't even ask you to be a hero. If you do, great. But just don't put yourself in that situation and hope that other people don't put themselves in that situation. Now, I know most of us are going to be like, hey, if children are in danger, we're going to have to risk our lives. We're going to have to try to be the hero. But with other adults, I almost don't feel the obligation. I'm like, you're a grown adult man or woman. You could have been armed. You have every uh, uh, ability to be able to protect yourself and you chose not to. So... That's not my fault. And I don't want anyone to feel that, but I can't stop you from putting yourself in that situation. And I can't allow the fact that you put yourself in that situation to make my kids orphans. So be prepared. Don't put yourself in that situation. Uh, And if other people do, like I said, it's on them. If you choose to step in, great. Like I said, if it's kids or something like that, it's different. But if it's another adult... I just don't understand how they got themselves there in the first place. How they decided that their self-defense and defense of their children and family isn't worth it to them. And yes, I know the chances of you ever needing a gun out in public are minimal. Just like the chances of ever being held down by an active shooter or in a situation where your life's at risk like that. But if you want to be prepared for such a rare occasion, then take the little time and effort to carry and be ready and practice enough that you know what to do when it happens. It's just preparedness. No one calls you paranoid for having a fire extinguisher. No one calls you paranoid for having seat belts in your car. No one calls you paranoid for getting medical insurance or life insurance. Having a gun on you sometimes can just be life insurance. So always carry, always be prepared. Never let yourself find yourself in a situation where you are in mortal terror because you are unprepared and someone else has all the power. And also, don't let the media frighten you into thinking that the only way you can be prepared is to try to disarm everybody else and the police will protect you. Police didn't protect these people. They got there after nine people were already dead and then one police officer died. So don't count on police, count on yourself. 
When you see things like this, don't let the media manipulate you by pretending like they care. They only care that a gun violence, uh, a situation of gun violence can foster and uh, further their agenda to keep those in power in power and to manipulate people and profit. So ignore the media. They don't care about those people that were shot any more than they care about your safety. They care about pushing an agenda and they care about making money. And also, like I've said a hundred times already in this video, and I'll say it again because I want to drive it home, always be prepared. Always carry, no matter how small the chances. Just because if in that one in a million chance something bad does happen, you don't want to live the last moments of your life in terror. In fact, you don't want those to be the last moments of your life at all. So be prepared.